you know, it's one of the things that I really love about working for Wagner Meters is the fact that customer service is really ingrained into our DNA. Um, and, it's, and it's really a corporate philosophy that <clears throat> it's not only in an effort to get the sale, but it's before the sale, during the sale, after the sale. We really try to walk the walk, talk the talk, as far as making sure that people have all the information they need uh, to make an informed buying decision, but to be able to use the piece of equipment that they get even after the fact. So it's one thing that I really, really, really uh, am very proud of from our company's philosophies and standpoints. That being said, let's jump into this segment that, that we have for today that's, that's rapid our answers, the questions that most won't ask. And I will tell you that there are questions that come out that the support team fields. Uh, most people probably won't ask them out loud or in a group, but it's something that they are very serious questions that we have been asked. And with that being said, here we go. Question number one, how does concrete float? Well, the interesting thing is concrete in and of itself won't float. If you just dump concrete out of a truck into the ocean, it's gonna sink for all intents and purposes. Now, you can take some of the aggregate possibly or the rock that's in the concrete mix and do like some kind of polystyrene or something in there instead of it that might make it more susceptible to floating, but in general, it will just sink. You hear about a lot of these, these or not a lot of these, but these competitions they have with canoes being made of concrete to see how long or how fast they will go uh, when competing head to head with other, other schools in a lot of cases, engineering programs um, or individuals. Most of that or that, the reason why the concrete in those situations will float is because of the shape of the boat. It's displacing more water. Um, so it allows it to physically float. It's the same reason or same principle as why steel can, or why ships are made of steel and how they can float. Question number two, are concrete and cement the same? Absolutely not. Cement is a powdery uh, substance that's made up of lime and silicon and, and things of that nature, iron. Concrete has cement in it but you add gravel and sand and, and other pieces of aggregate or types of aggregate to physically make it oh, water also so that it will go through the hydration process to become a hardened product. So again, cement is the powdery substance that is in concrete that when added to other things such as water and aggregate, make it concrete. Are all concrete mixes the same? Absolutely not. Now, you can have a lot of common pieces, but it's much like a, a, a chemistry experiment. You could have the same products or the same pieces of the chemistry experiment, but you could have different uh, ratios, and it can make totally different products. So in the different concrete mixes, you could have different admixtures to accelerate the curing process or slow the, pro slow the curing process down. You could have super plasticizers that allow for less, less water to be put into the, the concrete. So there can definitely be specific mixes for specific purposes, and they can be totally different than the other mixes that are out there. So it's very, very important the ratio and the types of ingredients that are in the concrete have very specific uses. Number four, can concrete be too dry for a flooring installation? Well, in theory, no. It can be too dry for the concrete to maintain its hardness or compressive strength of concrete. If the concrete doesn't have moisture in it, it in essence would turn back to a a powdery substance, but from a flooring installation standpoint, there really is not going to be a situation that is going to be too dry 
as long as the concrete slab is still appropriately structurally sound. Number five, can concrete, I'm sorry, can cement go bad? So cement in and of itself, we'll just take a, a for instance, a, a powdery or a, a powdery bag of cement that you buy at a home improvement store. In and of itself, left in an environment where it doesn't have any interaction with moisture um, or you know high humidity or anything that would cause the cement to mix with the uh, moisture and start the hydration process, then really there isn't too much for uh, too much in it to go bad per se. But I can tell you firsthand that you get the slightest bit of ambient relative humidity changes where it's high relative humidity and moisture in the air. And although you may not think it's having any kind of effect on the, the cement in the bag, you'll find out that it does, it does start to harden and or lose its uh, ability to reach full strength if you get to a point where you're actually using it. Number six, do you sell cement moisture testing kits? No, we don't sell cement moisture testing kits. Again, the products that we sell, the Rapid RH, are intended to test the relative humidity in concrete, not cement. Um, even the topical testing kits that are out there are meant to test concrete, not cement. If you were going to test cement, it would more than likely be something where you would be using some kind of electrode probes and probably looking at some kind of electrical impedance between the two probes to determine how much moisture was in the powder. Number seven, how do you reinstall a vapor barrier? Well, typically, I wouldn't call it a vapor barrier. I would call it a vapor retarder. And typically, that vapor retarder is going to be placed directly underneath your concrete slab. So, the issue is, if there isn't one there, reinstalling one would require you to, for all intents and purposes, demolish that concrete slab and start from scratch. That's usually not going to be realistic. So, what you'll find is, that most people that don't have an intact vapor retarder underneath the slab will try to figure out a way to install a vapor retarder on top of the slab if they're going to put some kind of finish on top of it that requires there to be some um, slowing of the vapor escaping from the concrete so that the floor product that's on top doesn't have an issue with its insulation. So a lot of times people will look to uh, different types of either, either uh, rollout or sheet type products that will uh, lessen the amount of vapor that can escape from the concrete or you know, roll on type of products like uh, two part epoxies or single part epoxies to lessen the amount of moisture that comes out. In essence, a lot of those products um, the good ones, what they're doing is they're taking a, a level of moisture that, let's just say the, the best one I've heard, you have an eight lane freeway without the vapor retarder. And what these products are doing is they're narrowing it down to a four lane freeway. So they're just slowing the amount of moisture that can physically get out of the slab so the finish can so the finish can withstand that that moisture. So those were the seven questions that we had. Definitely very interesting, but definitely ones that we've gotten. Um, if you like these things or like these, these videos, definitely go check out the entire library that we have. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get a hold of us. You can get me directly at jspangler at wagnermeters.com. Thanks, and have a fantastic day.